All right, I'm going to take a minute and talk about the three laws of thermodynamics. We've talked about PV diagrams and graphing and thermodynamic processes and all these things. And we've done all this work. We need to go back, um, just take a step back, to just take a look at the three laws. There are three laws of thermo. And thankfully, we've already looked at one law, the first law. The first law relates the internal energy uh, of a gas, the heat added to or taken away from a gas, and the work done on or by a gas. This equation right here, we've talked about it, I've talked about it until I've been blue in the face. So this is the first law. Now, what's the second law? Second law is one of my favorite things to talk about. Second law says a couple di different things. There's different ways in which you can state it. These are the three things, the three statements attached to the second law. Make a note. The second law governs a lot of our lives. It says that heat only flows from a hot object to a cold object. It doesn't flow the other way. Now, because of this, um, a couple things happen, one of which is the fact that it's impossible to get a, any type of engine or a machine that is 100% efficient. There's always friction. Uh, heat always to go, has to go from hot to cold. There's always friction in this world. And so we always have some in energy that is wasted. Uh, when you think about your car, you fill your car up with gasoline, where so we're using chemical in energy uh, in the engine of the car to do useful work. So this is one cylinder of a car uh, engine. Right? Uh, we can talk about cars as having uh, eight cylinders, four cylinders, six cylinders, there are V10s, there are V12s, there are V16 cylinder engines. This is one cylinder, so this is the cylinder, you see that the piston goes up and down. This is called a four-stroke, a four-stroke engine. So what happens is, is we put air and gas into the cylinder, it's compressed, and then this little thing right here is called the spark plug. It ignites the gas, forces the piston down, and then it is exhaust. It is, uh, we, 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 we exhaust all of that spent air gas mixture out into the environment, it goes to your tailpipe. And so this is what's going on. Uh, this is called a, a uh, internal combustion engine or a heat engine. And, and so, what happens is, is a lot of the energy in that air gas, air and gas mixture, ends up wasted. There's a lot of friction because there's a lot of moving parts in the, uh, the internal com combustion engine. And so it's kind of sad. The best internal co combustion engines in the world are at most, mm, most of them are less than 50, uh, 50, 50% uh, efficient, which means that every dollar of gasoline you put into your tank least 50 cents of it, probably more, is wasted as heat to overcome friction. There are a lot of different types of engines out there, and they all look uh, different, but they're all really doing the same thing. And there's all kinds of neat things that people have come up with. Um, these three up here are kind of the ones that you see. Four stroke is in most cars, or a diesel engine. Let's look at the diesel. There you go. Two-stroke engines are usually found in your mowers and your wheat, wheat, wheat eaters and things like this. It's called a two-stroke engine. This is cool. It's called a Wankel. Um, a company called Mazda came out with something called the RX-7 and then later on the RX-8. And it's really the same process. There's still uh, four strokes where they, right up here, the gas comes in, the air, they ignite it compress it, and then it leaves here. So this is really the same process. Really interesting engine, not very uh, clean burning engine. Jet engines are cool. And they're the same process. Here's your jet engine. Air goes in, they ignite it, they compress it, comes out really fast, call this thrust. All of these engines are doing the same thing. 
And what the second law says, the second law basically says that none of these things are going to be 100% efficient because there is friction to overcome. And so we're always going to get some uh, what we call losses. We're going to have heat. So the second law says this, that there's no such thing as a perfect engine. The other thing the second law says is that the, the entropy of a system never decreases. Entropy can only stay the same or increase. And this is a really interesting topic. So the theory behind this is that entropy is the amount of dis disorder in a cis system. And we say that Disorder uh, is what happens. Things always tend to go from more ordered states to more disordered states. And so one of the examples is if you, know, if you run your car into a brick wall, what are the odds that when you hit that brick wall, all the bricks will fall, will go flying, and they go falling into another nice, neat brick wall? The chances aren't very good. Is there a chance? Yes. Is it big? No. And so what happens is, there's a lot of research and thought going into whether or not time is even a thing. So we talk about time in terms of um, is it a real thing or is it a, is it a consequence of the second law? Let's think about this. If I have an egg and I drop that egg and the egg breaks, right? can I go backwards? Can I pick up all the pieces of egg and pieces of shell and I, can I put them back together the way they were and can I take all of the you know, all of the energy lost due to friction and heat and get it all back into that egg and back into my body. And No, I can't, I can't go back. There is a before and an after with how things become, you know, go from more ordered states to more dis disordered states. And so what happens is, is we say that time is really a function of the second law, right? Because I, you know, before I had a and an egg and after I did not um, so this is a really fascinating thing uh, that science is still kind of messing with and the the jury is kind of still out but entropy is a thing here's another version of the second law here with a bottom line so the second law is kind of a big deal Now, how does this relate to engines? Well, we're going to talk about this. So, an engine is something that takes something at a high temp and exhausts it at a low temp. Engines take, uh, we, get, we put work in and we get work out. Right? We put heat in and we get heat out. So, this is one of the pictures that you'll see a lot when we talk about engines. Okay? Now, heat flows from hot to cold. So I tend to draw this in this way, where I have a couple different arrows. I'll show you what I mean. So pictures look something like this, where you have a high temp reservoir and a low temperature, right? And so you you input heat, so heat comes in. Some of it's turned into useful work that you get, and some of it is lost to the low temp res res reservoir. Excuse me. So in your car. Right? We burn gas at high temperatures, and that high gas is turned into the movement of those pistons. Pistons go up and down. Okay. So what happens here, pistons go up and down, but it's turned into rotational motion. That's where the spinning of your tires com comes from. So this is high temperature when we have an explosion right, right there. Right? And Whatever is left over is exhausted, okay, to the to the what we call the low side. And so what happens is you only get a certain amount of useful work out. And we rate in, in engine efficiency in terms of the output work over the input work, or how much heat goes in, how much heat is exhausted. So there's a couple different things that we can say here, right? We have Q in, we have Q out. High temp, low temp, we get some work out, some work done. There's our little piston, there's the crankshaft that's going to spin. Okay. Um, we have to have a hot side and a cold side or else this doesn't work. What we can say is our output work, our work out, is equal to Q hot minus Q cold. So how much work you get out is equal to QH minus QC. 
q high minus q low, whatever you want to talk about it. Okay, so hot minus cold is the workout. So what we're really interested in is something called thermal e efficiency of any engine. And what we do is we look at how much energy we get out based on how much we take in. So we call this thermal efficiency. Right? And so what it is, we can say, well, it's Q hot minus Q cold over Q hot. So this is one way in which you can calculate the thermal efficiency of any heat engine. And it, there's a way you can simplify this, and you end up with this right here, 1 minus QC over QH. Okay. And like I said, cars are surprisingly inefficient. Um, I think the best engines are mostly, they're close to 40 or 50 percent. But my guess is that the cars that a lot of us drive are no more than, you know, probably in the 30s, something like that. So you're, you're wasting close to 70% or more of the money you spend on the gasoline in your car. Sometimes it's useful to express this idea as a rate. A rate is anything uh, divided by time. So the rate at which heat is absorbed, or the rate at which it is expelled, the rate at which work is done. If you recall, work divided by time is called power. So the power of any engine is something that we tend to care care about, especially when it comes to our cars. Uh, a more powerful car can do more work in the same time, or the same work in less time. So here's a few more ways in which you can express thermal efficiency in terms of, instead of work and heat, you can uh, do it in terms of power. And it gets a, the math gets a little crazy. This is actually power over heat over time. Uh, and there are some useful ratios. I don't know how much you're going to see these or have to use those. But, hey, it's there. Is there an ideal engine model? Um, and this is something that was first posed and solved by this guy back in the 1800s. Carnot, or Car Car Carnot. Uh, I believe it's Carnot. Um... The human body is surprisingly in, inefficient. This is something that we would do if we, we were in class. Humans, our bodies, uh, the majority the food that we take in goes to maintaining our core body temp, and it is expelled as body heat. Um, so even though you're saying, well, we should all be walking, don't know if that's true. However, um, what we probably should be doing is not using these cars. Um, electric cars are much more efficient um, than gas cars, um, the best thing, one of the best things, one of the best, you know, one of the best m machines in the world is the bicycle. Uh, very, very high um, efficiency. You don't see a lot of people using those here for their primary mode of transportation, but overseas, there's a lot of So this guy, Carnot, figured out uh, that if we have something called an ideal engine, and this is a purely, purely theoretical exercise, right? Um, we have this ideal engine, right? Um, the efficiency of this thing operating between two temps will be equal to the fraction of the temperature drop towards absolute zero. Um, this is a theoretical idea uh, that if you have some sort of ideal engine, uh, we can calculate the efficiency. Um, there's a lot of gob gobbledygook here, but just know that this is something that really isn't real world because there's no such thing as an ideal engine. So up here, here is our equation for thermal efficiency. Carnot efficiency uses temperature changes. So you say T hot minus T cold over T hot. It looks very similar to this one. This is this is using heat. This is using temp. Um, temperatures must be in Kelvin. So if you're going to use this, they have to be in Kelvin. 
And this is a purely the 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 theoretical idea of this ideal engine.